So let's now fetch our actual post data for this single post here. Now the cool thing is that in the lib folder in the posts util file, we already got this get post data function. And we can basically utilize this. The only problem we'll have is that it expects a file name. It expects a file name and when we load a single post here, we'll only have the slug, which is the file name without the file extension. So we either convert this slug to a file name by adding an extension here when reaching out to get post data, or we make get post data more flexible. We could, for example, name this um, post identifier to make it a bit more generic. Then we create the post slug right away as a first step by taking our post identifier and replacing the extension. And if it doesn't have that extension, that's no problem. So if we received just a slug, replace will just do nothing, which is also fine. And then here, when we need the file path, we don't just pass in the post identifier, but instead we create a string with a template literal and we use post slug, which is guaranteed to not have an extension and add .md here. So we always create a file path or a file name with extension here. And if we restructure our code like this, it should already work. Now we can call get post data with a file name, with an extension, or with just a slug. Therefore, now we can export this to then use it in our single post page. Because here I want to get a single post for a given slug. Now for that, here in post detail page, I'll again export a function, the get static props function. Again, for the same reasons as mentioned before, get server side props could be used here, but isn't better. And then here we get this context object. We get this in all get static props functions, but we haven't needed it before. Now we do need it because we can get our params out of context. That's what you also learned in the course. Context has a params key, and that simply is um, then an object with the concrete values of all the dynamic segments that might lead to this file. So in this case, we'll be able to extract the concrete slug value from params because we have that dynamic segment in this file name. So here we then have the slug, which we get from params. And now we can use that slug to get the data for a single post. With get post data, so importing that function from the lib folder and the posts util file and passing the slug as our argument. That will then give us the data for that file. It will read that data for that file and it's able to read that because get static props executes during the build process or on the server, not in the client. And then therefore we get our post data here. And hence we can then return our object as we always have where we set the props for our component. And here we can add the post prop which holds that post data. And here we could make a case for adding revalidate. Here, we're not going through all the posts. We're fetching the data for a single post. So this will be very fast. And if we set revalidate to, let's say, 600 here, then we ensure that if we ever updated a markdown file without rebuilding the entire application, that then still we do get that latest data at least once every 10 minutes so that we don't have to rebuild the entire application just because we fixed a typo in one of our markdown files. We could do this here because here rebuilding after deployment will be much faster than if we do it for the other pages where we have to go through all the post files, which takes a bit longer and therefore would slow down some of the requests. Here, it would not slow down the requests at all or not by much at least and we only do it once every 10 minutes anyways. Of course, you can tweak this duration to a duration that fits your needs though. You can make it longer or shorter. But with that, we now have get static props here. 
However, since this is a dynamic page, you learned that get static props can't work on its own. We need to pair it with get static paths to let next know which concrete slug values it should pre-generate. And therefore we need to export another function here. We need to export the get static paths function. This returns an object with all the paths that should be prepared. So with all the concrete values for a slug that should be prepared. And that's an array full of objects where we set params to another nested object and then provide our concrete slug values. That's what you learned. Now we can not prepare anything and basically just set paths to an empty array and set fallback to true. Then the data will be prepared and fetched on demand when we visit this page. With fallback true, we should also render some fallback content though for the scenario that the post hasn't been loaded yet. Or we set fallback to blocking to wait until it has been generated. This could be fine. And it could be fine if you have a blog with thousands of posts where a lot of those posts are rarely read and rarely visited and you don't want to pre-generate all those posts then using a pattern like this could make sense. Or you pre-generate some of your posts, your most popular posts, and not all of them. In this blog here, where we will only have a couple of posts, only a couple of dozens or hundreds of posts, pre-rendering all posts isn't too difficult and isn't too much work. And hence I'll set fallback to false and explicitly define all paths in advance. And for defining all paths in advance, I need to know which paths we have. Now we can get all those paths by using another function from the posts util folder. There in get all posts, we get all our post files. Then we also read all the data from there. Now that's a bit overkill here. I'm not interested in all the data here. I'm just interested in getting the post files in this case. Hence, I will actually refactor this and put this here, this code, where I read all the files from the posts directory into a separate function, maybe here at the very top, which I'll name get posts files. And there I'll return fs read dir sync. And I'll export this function so that we can also use it outside of this file. And then down there in get all posts, I'll now call get posts files so that this works again. So that allows me to just get all the post file names without doing all the sorting and mapping, which will slow down the process a bit, which is just not needed for pre-rendering the individual post files. So this gives me all the post file names with the file extensions included though. We should keep that in mind and therefore, in slug.js, I now can call get posts files. So I'll import that function and call it from the lib folder and the posts util file. Now this will give me all the post file names. And here I'm actually just interested in the slugs. So the file names without the extensions. Hence I'll create a slugs constant and that just is post file names where I map every file name such that I remove the extension. So I'll just again replace um, this regular expression, which we also used here. So I'll just copy that code in the end and replace that with uh, an empty string. So that now maps all my file names into just slug strings. And now we can generate paths here by going through all the slugs and mapping every slug into an object, hence the parentheses around it, so that this is not treated as the function body, but as an immediately returned object, where we have the params key, which holds another nested object, where we set slug equal to slug here. And we could also do this in one step. Um, I'm doing it in two steps here to make it a bit more readable. So this will now generate an array of path objects and we are generating all our paths in advance.
So we are pre-generating this single post page for all our posts in advance. Now this should work. In get static props, we return our post prop. So now we can use this here in the post detail page and get props and set a post prop on post content and pass props.post into that and then go to post content to use this post prop instead of the dummy post there. So in post content, I'll get rid of that dummy post and ex instead accept props here. And then here we can, um, first of all, extract our post from the props and then use post.slug here and uh, post.image and here post.title and of course here also post.content. If we do all of this, if we save everything and reload this page, it should work. We should see the image, the title and the actual content as we wrote it in the markdown file. Now it is of course up to you to then add styling for the different content elements you might have. You can do this with the post content module CSS file. Here by using the content class and then selecting different elements in your content, you can style them and change link colors, change the display of tables, uh, whatever you might have. But with that, we are fetching our actual post data. And therefore now we can click on a post here, see it, click on it here, see it, and it just works.